We're now moving on to the drive unit. Um, first part, first step for uh, getting the drive unit set up is to remove the lead counterweights from the box and to get them fastened onto the top of the uh, top assembly. So it just attaches onto here and you've got two bolts and basically slide them in and bolt them on together. So that's the first step. We've installed the lead counterweights. Uh, next step is to remove the uh, frame case cover, the plastic frame case cover. So we just, these are just hand knobs, uh, hand bolts, just loosen those, remove that. Uh, next is to check to make sure that the vein locking pin is inserted so that the uh, counterweights can't fly from side to side. And then we want to roll the unit over and make sure that the ratio knob is in the far left position so that the drive rod is all the way to the right. Next up is to get the rudder on. Uh, first, most important thing, get a lanyard on the rudder and tie it off. Uh, this should be, a lanyard should be on the rudder at all times, uh, whether you're using it or not. Uh, even when the rudder's on there and fitted, keep a lanyard, a safety line on it. Uh, and then, so Sarah's gonna drop the rudder in the water. I'm gonna take the locking pin and insert it in the hole. And at the same time, she's gonna position it so that this pinhole is perfectly fore and aft, which means that the rudder hole is 90 degrees to that so I can get the, uh, the shaft lock, rudder locking pin in, in place. So let's give it a try. Drop it down a tiny bit, up a bit, down a bit, there we go. Next step is to get the drive unit onto the shaft. So handle this piece of expensive gear, very, treat it like gold. Uh, as you can see, we've got a safety line on it, safety lines on everything. And basically what we're do gonna do is just take it up and slide it onto the shaft. So it just wiggles on just like that. And you've got the controls on the forward side, and away we go. Uh, in some situations, you will find that it's a bit tight getting it on. So what you can do is there's a threaded bolt hole on this side. You can thread another 10 millimeter bolt into this hole and just turn it a quarter turn and see if that gives you enough and then if it doesn't, another quarter turner. You don't want to turn it too much because you could risk damaging the casting. So it's very important not to overturn it. And to also make sure that these bolts are loose before you crank this down. Because if they're tight and you crank it, you could do real damage. So that's if you can't get the drive unit onto the shaft assembly. The controls are facing forward and it's also easier if you can turn the worm gear assembly so that the lead counterweights are on the front side of the unit, just so you have more room and it's, the weight is centered on it. So next step is fitting the tiller assembly onto the top of the uh, shaft assembly. Uh, again, we've made sure that the ratio rod is all the way to the right, which means the ratio knob is to the left. So we're gonna lift up the unit right up we're going to slide fork arms into the drive rod and then this bronze casting will actually fits right onto the top of the shaft which is machined down to an inch. Now that we've got the tiller set up we're going to insert the shaft locking pin and by doing that we need to again get our arm around the unit lift it up slightly. Sarah's making sure that the rudder is positioned fore and aft and there we go. Shaft locking pin is in, it's in this hole here, you can't quite see it, but it's in there. So now we've double checked that the drive unit is square to the boat, 90 degrees to the center line. Uh, you can step back and take a look at it or just look at it from the side. Uh, you basically just need to eyeball it. And then down here, you wanna tighten these bolts. So I've tightened the top one and now I'm gonna tighten the bottom one. Like that. Double check the top one. And then go back to the bottom. So it's on there good and tight. And then we're gonna move on to the tiller clamp bolt, which clamps onto the top of the shaft. This is just so that the tiller is perfectly fore and aft. Again, this one needs to be paralleling the center line of the boat. So the tiller should be perfectly parallel with a line straight down the center of the boat. 
So we're gonna tighten this. The tiller looks good, which means the rudder is perfectly fore and aft. Put the wrench on there and tighten it up. Sarah's holding it in place for me. And this is a bronze casting here, so you can really put a lot of force on it. You wanna put a fair bit of oomph in that so that the tiller can't work its way loose when you're at sea. So that's why we use bronze, so you can really wrench on it. Okay, next step, which is actually part of the one of the tests, uh, the, one of the final tests, is to take a, a bilge pump handle uh, or something similar, something that's got a three quarter inch OD and slide it into the hydrovane tiller like that. And what that does is it makes it easier for us to determine what's perfectly fore and aft because it exaggerates you know, the line that it sits on. So put the tiller in. Now we look at the, the tiller, look down, make sure that it's paralleling the center line of the boat, which it looks good. And we've got uh, movement on the, on the drive rod, which we'll show you later in one of the tests. Okay, so we'll do a brief rundown of the various tests now that we've got everything mounted and the bolts tightened down. The first one is to make sure that the locking pin inserts easily into the shaft sleeve, and it does. There should be a little bit of friction there. It's designed that way uh, so that the pin doesn't rattle out. Second is to remove the pin and flick the tiller from side to side and make sure there's no resistance. It's a little harder to tell that when the rudder's on because you've got some resistance from the, from the water, but you can feel it when you're moving it back and forth. If there's any resistance there, um, what most likely what is causing that is down on the bottom collar, uh, what can happen is when you're putting the rudder on, it can bind against the bottom bearing and cause friction. So you need to make sure there's a little gap or space between the bottom bearing and the bottom collar. Uh, to do so, you can simply get a business card and slide it in between the two and make sure you've got clearance there. Uh, if you don't, it'll cause the bearing to bind and cause friction in the system. Uh, next one is uh, the drive sleeve test. Uh, you want to have the shaft locking pin inserted. And we just test to make sure that this plastic sleeve in here, right here, it spins freely on all settings. So we check on that point. We we'll go to the middle setting spins freely and then all the way disengaged and the sleeve spins freely. Next step is to make sure again that your drive unit is on square. We went through this in the in the initial installation of the drive unit but it's a good thing to double check. It, draw an imaginary line straight through the drive unit and it should be 90 degrees to the center line of the boat. One of the final steps uh, for getting the hydrovane installation complete is putting the vane cover onto the vane assembly. Uh, what you'll need for this is uh, the vane cover, the, the line that's supplied with the cover, uh, some silicone spray, and some zip ties or zap straps. So the first step is to actually get the vane cover unfolded. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this silicone spray all along the edges around the, the vein cover. And uh, this just makes it easier for the cover to slide onto the vein assembly. Without the spray, it's very difficult. And a little bit here. That's good. Okay. And now we'll slide it on. So we've got the vein covered down as far as we can and you'll look at it and think that the vein cover is actually too short, but it's not. Uh, that's all part of the process. So the next step is to actually take some zip ties and run it through the grommets and cinch it up onto the bottom of the vein tube and get it up as tight as you can. And it might look like you're going to hurt the vein cover, but you're not. You can use a bit of force here and you just want to get it up as tight as possible and then get your line, which is just leech line, into the grommets and start webbing your way through 
around the frame, starting at the end closest to the aluminum casting, working your way up around to the top section. So we've got all the webbing lace now onto the frame and we're just going to do a final cinch up here uh, to get the vein cover nice and tight. So we use a fair bit of force again, get it up tight and then cinch it down, get it up tight. So we've just finished the end here with a little reef knot. You can do it however you want. You just don't want the, the lacing to come loose. And then I've tucked it inside the vein cover here so you don't see it. And Bob's your uncle. And so once it's done, it should be tight, tight as a drum. So you should be able to paint it and bounce a ball off of it all along that edge. The vein covers, we use um, a ripstop nylon for them. and. Um, uh, it will degrade in the sun, in the UV, so especially in the tropics when salt's on it, uh, it does degrade quite quickly, but we have to have this material so that it's lightweight for the vein's light air performance. So it's ideal if you can get the vein off and find somewhere down below to store it where it's safe when you're not using the unit. Let's move on to one of my favorite features of the hydrovane, which is the remote course setting assembly. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. Um, I like it because it allows you to adjust the angle of the vane without having to lean over the back of the boat. Now, what we will have provided you with is this section of line, which is in about a 20 foot length, as well as this block on a bungee. Now, the first thing you want to do is take your line and you're going to run it through the fair leads. Pretty simple. Around this and back through. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run this line into the cockpit, somewhere convenient where you can reach it and make adjustments. And we're going to create an endless loop so you can make your course changes from within the cockpit. This is the only line on the hydrovane that needs to be run back into the cockpit and you want to run it somewhere out of the way. So in this case, we're going to do it down the side of the boat along the lifelines. We've set up some shackles here on the side and I'm going to run the line through those. Normally we'd recommend the use of uh, double blocks. We don't have any right now. Um, you can really use as many double blocks as you need to. The line doesn't need to be in a completely direct route back, especially if you have something like a center cockpit boat and you want the line to be moving around various obstructions. That's completely fine. So I'm going to run the line all the way down pretty much to the end here. Uh, I'll just add my block in. There we go. Measure off how much line I think we're going to need with this attached. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we'll cut the line here and do our heat weld to have the endless loop. We're hiding out of the wind a bit for this one. So you want to have clean ends on the end of the line. You also want to make sure that you do this, the, the heat weld, before the lines get salty, because after that it won't work. Uh, now Will's going to light up the lines. There we go. Wait until they're quite gooey. And now we're going to press them together. There we go. And Will's just blotting them down with uh, his wet fingers. Our loop looks great. I'm just going to run it down here and attach it on. And this is great because it means you can remove it whenever you need to. There we go. And we have our endless loop. Okay, installation complete. Um, I just thought we'd point out a few things maintenance wise for the unit. Uh, one of them is making sure that after you've gone out for your first test sale, re-torque all of the bolts. So that means the bolts on the brackets and also the through bolts that are mounted onto the transom. Uh, next thing you want to also watch out for is make sure that you've got your safety line tied onto the rudder. Uh, obviously if something happens to the rudder you don't want that falling off. And it's always good to wash down the unit when you're washing the boat. Just use some soap and water, rinse it off. And from time to time, spray all the castings with uh, some corrosion spray like T9 or Corrosion X just to keep the castings protected and looking nice. So let's go for a sale. Mm -hmm.